If we continue like this, we only have seven years left until global warming reaches 1.5 degrees. This is the sober, albeit bridged conclusion of the scientific studies of the World Climate Council, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. We know that there is a direct link between the greenhouse gases emitted by humans and the rise in global temperatures compared to the pre-industrial era. If emissions rise, the temperatures rise as well. So for every amount of greenhouse gases emitted, the IPCC calculates a temperature with a certain probability. We are now already at around one degree of global warming. In order to limit the temperature increase to 1.5 degrees, the IPCC estimates that we will only be able to admit a total of 300 gigatons of CO2 going forward. This is the so-called carbon budget we have left. At current rates, it will last for only seven more years. But the less we emit today, the longer this budget will last in the future. The budget implies that CO2 emissions must be radically reduced. There are many possible pathways, but it is generally accepted that by 2050, humanity as a whole should aim for net zero carbon emissions. This means that by then, the same amount of carbon should be absorbed as the amount that is emitted. Very ambitious plan. The good news is that more and more countries are committing themselves to the Paris Accord with concrete targets. A large number of countries announced over the last year that they would reduce greenhouse gas emissions to net zero by 2050, including Japan, the UK, and also Switzerland. Even China, one of the largest greenhouse gas emitters, is aiming to reach net zero by 2060. The incoming US administration has announced to step up their efforts for a Green Deal. And the European Union is increasing its target from a 40% reduction to 55% by 2030. These announcements will be followed up with increased regulations, taxes, penalties and incentives. This is bad news for fossil fuel companies. All known existing fossil gas, oil and also coal reserves far exceed the carbon budget. If we also add to this the presumed but as yet untapped reserves, we arrive at an amount of almost 3,000 gigatons of CO2 of potential emissions. But if we only have around 300 gigatons that can be emitted in line with the climate targets, the rest of the fossil fuel reserves will become worthless in the very near future. They will become stranded. And along with them, the power stations, the ships, planes and trucks that burn them, as well as the companies that manufacture them. The risk of stranded assets is a problem not only for companies, but also for investors. Over the next few years, these securities could be drastically devalued. Carbon Tracker estimates that a total of 26 trillion US dollars in market capitalization could be at risk. They have long argued that the stranded assets are a carbon bubble waiting to burst. Worried by this prospect, the Global Financial Stability Board under Mark Carney, the former governor of the Bank of England, has undertaken everything to increase the level of available information on climate-related exposures by encouraging companies to report them. Looking at the performance of energy stocks in the last 10 years, it seems that the bubble has already deflated slowly but surely. The mostly fossil energy sector has underperformed the MSCI World Index by around 75% over the last 10 years. And more underperformance is yet to come.
While the carbon bubble is deflating and fossil fuel assets are stranding, there will be also huge opportunities for investors. The introduction of carbon taxes, cap and trade systems, will spur structural shift to a net zero carbon emitting world economy by 2050. Entire new industries of carbon positive activities, such as carbon capturing and storage, forestry and soil preservation, will have emerged in order to compensate the remaining carbon emissions. Other industries will employ technologies to substitute or to store carbohydrates. For example, more and more buildings will be built with wood to store CO2. Companies will have diversified their businesses to become carbon neutral or even positive by themselves. Investors can benefit by picking these champions of tomorrow. At the same time, they should avoid stranded assets while reducing the carbon footprint in order to future-proof portfolios against the unavoidable climate transition.